You know, I consider myself a psychiatric survivor, a human rights activist, trauma survivor. I'm also a breast cancer survivor. You know, I'm a lot of, a lot of surviving in my life. What has helped me in my recovery is finding the consumer survivor expatient movement. I kind of knew when I was in, locked up in the hospital and taking a lot of drugs, while well, I was giving a lot of drugs, that uh, it was something more than this, something more. I got to meet some really cool people. I met Judy Chamberlain, I met uh, Howie the Harp, I met uh, Ed Knight, I met all these people. I was just blown away by them, you know, and I said to Judy, I said, who's allowing you to be doing alternatives? And she laughed because I think people need to understand in mental health you're not really allowed to do anything. They tell you what it is that they want you to do. And here she's doing what she feels it's good for her and her spirit and, and, and her activism. And I, I was just blown away. And I came back home and I just st was in the movement at that time. And I was starting to spread the message of self-help because at that time it was self-help and advocacy. The language has changed through uh, the years. Um, so before, you know, are you your consumer, your survivor, now you're a human rights activist. <laughs> so um, peer advocate, you know, different, different uh, terms. But I really believe that people can recover and people have a story to tell and people can support each other by listening to the story. And, you know, just listening helps people feel like they're not alone. And I feel when I'm talking to someone in the movement or a friend or a family member and they really are validating me and my experience, it's like I'm on the top of the world. And I think that's what's missing for people is connection. And uh, I think if we have connection, all the other issues, life, the mental health system, you know, you can get through it. And I think celebrating, you know, some of our, our leaders from the past and learning from them is, helps us get through the different stages and the new experiences uh, that we're gonna experience in human rights. So to me, you know, we have all these problems with mental health and uh, forced electric shock, all of those things are there. But if you have the people together working on it, fighting for change, social change, then you're not alone. Um, you know, mind freedom, I think, is, um, has really helped people come together, and not just survivors of the system, but all people who want to fight human rights. I, I just think that we all should be working together. And I think the message is now, we have been talking to each other for a long time. And now it's time to talk to people in the public about what these issues are. Because someone in my family can be dealing with mental health. You know, my son, I mean, you know, it's not a separate issue, mental health over here, mental illness over here, it's everywhere. And so we have to address it. And we have to let people know there are alternatives. There are people that are there to connect with you. You don't have to be afraid. And I, but I do think the label is stigmatizing. You know, whatever people want to call themselves, you know, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever, you're a person first. And I think that's missing. And so I think some of the stigma campaigns have not been that successful. You're not a disease, you're a person. And I struggle with that, with the label. Am I somebody's daughter? Am I somebody's mother? I think that's what's missing. And that's why it's so hard for people to really connect with mental health, you know? So I think that over the years I have taught my family, for one, that you have to support people where they're at. And it's not about drugs. It's about all different kinds of approaches. And I have, uh, for me to stay well, I have done meditation. I'm a Reiki II practitioner. And I'm very happy about it because that's what keeps me together. Now, this is just me. Other people have other ways that they heal. 
but I need to do that. I need to breathe more, exercise. I choose to not have my mind clouded. I choose to just feel whatever it is. Depression, you know, sadness, loneliness, all those feelings and cope with it. People struggle with the messages that you never get well. I was told I would never get married, I'd never go to school, I'd never be a mother. And I, I've gone to college, I have a son, I'm married. So imagine someone telling you that and you internalize that and then you don't do, you don't, you, you don't, you don't become your best self because someone has said you can't do those things based on a psychiatric disability. You know, you get down on what the public is thinking. I don't think they've caught up to recovery and human rights and mutual support and peer support, uh, trauma-informed, all these things. I, I don't think that they caught up to that. You know, when they look at someone who's labeled with a mental illness, they said, well, maybe they're violent, maybe they'll act up or, you know. Um, so they don't see us as people, and they need to. So they have to catch up to us. To be a survivor of psychiatry is you survived the mental health system. You survived forced electric shock. You survived taking drugs or being forced to take drugs. I think mind freedom, you know, you can have a choice, you know, if you want to take a psychiatric drug. But when you're forced to, we're against that, and we will fight with you to stop that. We're not, everything should be your choice, informed uh, decision making. Uh, when the system imposes that because you have a diagnosis that you must take drugs, oh, by the way, we feel you need to have electroshock without your consent, that's just wrong. And that's, um, that's what we've been fighting for of a very long time. It's not a quick fix. It's not a pill and that's going to solve my whole life. When you go into the system and you're stripped of your dignity and your rights, that's traumatic.